Microsoft Office 365 is said to be dethroning some of its competitors. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about that and the benefits that come with having this product? Yeah, we're very happy and excited about the launch of Office 365 uh, here in Africa. It's a, a service and a product that we've had in market for a year now worldwide. And this announcement um, makes us excited because it's the first time that we will now cover Africa. Um, we're launching the product in Nigeria, Kenya and in South Africa. And the product is exciting because it allows small, mid-sized and large businesses to get access to world-class, enterprise-scale services directly from Microsoft that today most of these organizations have to run themselves. Um, we think that it is, a, it is much better than anything else that is in the market today because it takes all of the richness of the office application that so many people use and love running on their desktops and extends the functionality that Office provides to make that available as a cloud service as well. It also gives very, very sophisticated um, collaboration, um, uh, video, voice and web conferencing capabilities, um, and then makes all of the email um, functionality available that we find in a product like Exchange today, and make that available at all of these organizations without any upfront cost, because it's a subscription-based model where people pay monthly for the service. So very excited about it, fantastic offering, and we're very happy to launch it here in Africa. Now this is the first time that the Microsoft Office 365 will be in South Africa, Nigeria, and Kenya. Are you possibly looking into expanding it to other African countries? Yes, this announcement means that we're expanding from 40 countries worldwide to 88 countries worldwide. So it's a significant step forward. Our ultimate aspiration clearly is that Office 365 should be available wherever Microsoft sells software. Um, and this is certainly a big step forward towards that, that end point. The countries in Africa were picked clearly because of their size, the market size, and, uh, and the opportunity within those countries. But we also had to consider these countries' location and the bandwidth availability between these countries and our data centers. Because of the service running in Microsoft data centers, we needed to make sure that customers can get a very high quality of service from Microsoft. And therefore, we picked these countries because we've been running tests within these countries to ensure that the user experience for these countries will be very good. Our plan is to expand that and we will be making announcements um, around further expansion every year as we roll out to additional countries. A lot of people may say that there are certain sectors that may benefit more from these applications, where for example the agricultural sector reap the same benefits as someone who would from the financial sector. Yeah, we think that uh, most businesses um, will benefit from, from this offering uh, for the simple reason that uh, very few businesses today can really afford to put the level of sophistication in their infrastructure in place that is needed to run this type of, this type of service. Um, so we think there's a massive benefit to customers in that we're going to do it at a lower cost than anyone can do that if they do it themselves. Secondly, we think that this takes a lot of complexity away from even those businesses that do today run their own IT infrastructure. Um, as an example, we find that um, a small business today can get up and running on the servers literally within 15 minutes. And that gives you, as a small business, immediately a presence on the web. So it gives you a, a domain, a domain name, a website, Plus, then immediately your users can get access to email um, by simply registering on the site um, and getting the user registered. So very simple, no complexity. And I think very importantly, the fact that there's no upfront investment required in order to access the service and get the software is a significant benefit to businesses, which is why we think that it really will have broad-based appeal regardless of the sector or the type of business. 
we know that the ICT sector is one of the key drivers in economic growth. When coming into Africa, what were some of the challenges that you faced? Yeah, this, it's been an interesting journey, our expansion into Africa. Um, but it's been an exciting one because we, we see that in spite of the challenges and the obvious challenges are around infrastructure, um, we see that there's been fantastic progress. If you just look at the availability of internet access and bandwidth in Africa in the last number of years, it's been a fin fantastic um, improvement in terms of that. Um, clearly, um, the availability of money, you know, the, the average income for people to access or to get access to or to buy sophisticated technology has always been an obstacle. Um, and that's something that we've been working very hard on is to help people get access to technology at an affordable, on an affordable basis. Um, and so with the Office 365 coming into play now, we're very excited about that because for the first time we can now make that, we can lower the, 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 bar, the entry or the, the barrier to entry even further by not demanding that people pay upfront for the, for the software or for the service. So cost is definitely an issue, infrastructure is an issue, but we see only a bright future for Microsoft's business and for the, for the sector, for ICT in Africa. Um, we also making significant investments in the coming few months in how we're gonna support the development of the, the software economy, specifically in African countries. We think that there's a big opportunity for developers in Africa to develop software and applications for problems in Africa. Um, we're often so reliant on these applications and software solutions to be developed in Europe or in the, or in, in, uh, in the US, obviously. Um, and we think it's time for African developers to stand up and develop the solutions that are relevant to the continent and do that in Africa.